All right, Mr. Conway. Now you've you've made some splashes lately on the internet with some of the comments you've made about uh, about some of your characters. Now I'd like to ask you if, if you don't mind talk about how the the uh, publishers are handling what considered derivative characters and how you how you feel about that. Well, you know, it's a, it's it's a philosophical debate, but I do think, uh, as I said in a recent post, that the publishers are actually trying to find ways to compensate creators for their contribution to these multimedia uh, presentations of the characters that we created. Uh, you know, they, for their, own, for their own technical reasons, I think they find it difficult to uh, credit certain characters as created by. But my understanding from a pretty extensive conversations I've had now is that they do actually want to find ways to give creators some benefits so that's a good thing. That's a, that's a change uh, or a development that's, I think, more aggressive than it would have been, say, a few years ago. Now, despite any issues you may have had in the past, do you, do you get any kind of thrill out of seeing your characters brought to life? Absolutely. I love it. Uh, and I, and part of, I think part of the motivation for me being as upset that I, as I was was that it was kind of coloring my delight in seeing these characters uh, uh, being embraced by a, a, a new audience, you know. So it was, it, and they, the fellows who've been doing the work uh, have been doing such a marvelous job of it that I wanted, uh, you know, to really acknowledge their contributions as well as my own, you know, to these characters. I would imagine technology has been a big hand in that. We find if you see Firestorm, which really realistically Pike couldn't have seen before. Uh, actually, trying to do Firestorm before probably would have resulted in tears and. and <laughs> Lots of pain and anguish on the part of the actors. So yeah, uh, no, it's 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 a lot of fun to see it see it happening. Now um, I would say I would say it's safe to say that Gwen Stacy's death is probably one of the most impactful in comics. Did you carry any of the weight of that at all? Well, it was it was such a, a traumatic experience for comic re readers at the time because nothing like that had been done in quite that way before. Uh, that they did not know how to respond, and a lot of them res comic book fans like things to change but they don't want them to change too much and there's a there's a kind of a, a I won't say a conservative reaction but there's a there's a protective reaction that 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 fans have towards their favorite characters and killing off one of those characters in a way that, that we did uh, we got a, a pretty heavy backlash and uh, I, I basically stopped going to conventions and reading letters pages for a long time I would imagine so. I just one last question. Now, um, Punisher, when it was created, uh, was kind of a reflection of the times. Do you think, had you created Punisher now, it would have the same? Uh, it would be the same character? Well, it probably wouldn't. But the thing about the Punisher is that he's a he's a Rorschach test for creators and readers. Uh, he reflects the times in which he exists. Uh, unlike Batman, who has a fairly simple, straightforward backstory and a moral code that's kind of unimpeachable. The Punisher is an ambiguous, morally ambiguous character, and you can read into him what you want. Uh, so you've had, we've had right-wing versions of Punisher, we've had left-wing versions, versions of Punisher, we've had versions where he's clearly psychotic, other versions where he's more troubled and more self-doubting. But at root, he represents that need, I think, that, that we all have for an avenging angel. And depending upon the creator and depending upon the times, uh, he takes different manifestations. Well, thank you very much, sir.